So now we're going to review the quantum harmonic oscillator. Um, this is a review, right? So this is probably going to be like a 10 or 15 minute review on just the quantum harmonic oscillator. We're not talking about quantum fields yet. Uh, what we've done so far is we've covered a lot of classical field theory, right? This is coming from the book, which is No Nonsense Quantum Field Theory. We've covered a lot of classical uh, we've covered a lot of classical interactions, and now we're covering quantum mechanics. And then after this, we're going to be covering quantum fields. And so let's get right into just reviewing the quantum mechanics part. We're reviewing the quantum harmonic oscillator now. Quantum harmonic oscillator, again, if you're not familiar, oh, and if, just by the way, if you're, if you like this kind of content, please hit that subscribe button. And I, um, uh, I also am in a different space. This is an office now, which is nice. Um, anyways, let's get started with the quantum harmonic oscillator. So the quantum harmonic oscillator looks like this. Right? This is the model. This is our potential. Right? I'm not going to get into the details again, right? Because oh, nice there. Because again, this is just a review. We're going through quantum field theory. We want to get to quantum fields, but we are getting through there by steps. And, and one of these steps necessarily means we have to remind ourselves about the quantum harmonic oscillator. So this here is the potential that defines the harmonic oscillator as a model, right? So we have an electron. The electron is um, have, it's at some equilibrium position, and it's sort of say it's between two atoms, right? If it's between two atoms, it's moving between two atoms rapidly, right? We're modeling that motion uh, with a quantum harmonic oscillator. Right? So it oscillates back and forth, and it's quantum because it's a fundamental particle. And the potential we use to describe that motion is this right here, right? We have the mass of the particle times its angular frequency times its position squared. And then we have this kinetic term, right? The kinetic term is are the derivative with respect to the position as a that's an operator operating on the wave function of this particle again the wave function defines the probability of the particle being in some particular state and this is just some some constant out in front again we have two times the mass of the particle this h right here is um, our Hamiltonian, right? So Hamiltonian is an operator and uh, it gives us energy. So the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian are energies, okay? So that that's this, that, right? I literally just went through the harmonic oscillator in like three minutes. But let's go into a little bit more depth here. We want to define these two objects. These two objects are, if you know what we're, well, We've been, uh, if you know this kind of stuff already, this might not be new, but this, it, these are uh, creation and annihilation operators. I'm not going to suppose that right now. I'm just going to say, by definition, we're going to say one, we're, we're going to define something, and we're going to define another thing as being this complex conjugate. And that's these two things right here. So we have the real part of these two objects, which is the same. And then one, and then one is a complex conjugate of the other. Okay, and then we are interested now. We're, we want to play around with these, right? We, so let's suppose let's ask the question: What is this quantity, right? So when we add them up together, what do we get? Well, that's fairly simple, right? This is going to cancel out with this, and we just get two of these right here. And then going through some mathematical man manipulations, you get this relationship right here. I would urge you to pause the video if you want to, to go through this yourself by hand, okay? And it's not that, it's really not that difficult. It's uh, some basic algebra. Um, you can do the same thing and get this relationship for the difference between the two, right? So, that's, that's that, right? We, we haven't really done much, actually. We, we said we're going to define two things. We're going to necessitate that one's a complex conjugate of the other. And then we're going to solve 
for the position and the momentum in terms of these two things. We still don't know what they are yet, right? Uh, but okay, fair enough. Well, now that we have these relationships, we haven't really done much yet. We haven't even touched the harmonic oscillator yet. We just said, you know what? We're, again, we're just defining these two things. So now let's put them into the harmonic oscillator model. Let's see what happens. So this is the eigenvalue form of the harmonic oscillator Schrodinger equation, right? Nothing here changes. The only thing that really changes between these two equations, again, right here, this is our kinetic term, where we have the derivative with respect to um, the position. Here, momentum is the same thing in quantum, mechanic, in quantum mechanics speak. Uh, momentum and the derivative with respect to position are essentially the same thing, right? And the reason we can say that is because we there are, we have these wave functions that we're operating on, and the and momentum as an operator is a derivative with respect to position, because it intuitively just think about this: what what is momentum? It's mass times velocity. Velocity is the derivative with respect to time. Right, our position, but again, we're, there's a little bit of a difference be, uh, here, but it's a derivative nonetheless, right? And we can go, you can go back into your quantum mechanics course and understand why that's the case. But nevertheless, position and momentum are operators when we're in the world of quantum mechanics. And so here's our position, here's our momentum. And we literally plug in what we just got from over here, right? So these were the two relationships, right? Plug in what we just got into our model, do a bunch of algebra, and get down to here, right? So I would urge you again to pause the video. You can see, right? You would you expand this, right? You square it. Square this, see what you get when you square this, and then apply it to everything else. See what you get when you square this and apply it to everything else. You get all these terms, right? You get all these terms. A lot of them are going to cancel, right? So, like for example, this term here and this term here, they're going to cancel because one's the negative of the other, right? So, this one will cancel with this one. This one will cancel with this one. Right, and we are left with uh, you can see, I'm not going to go through all this, but um, we're left with these guys here, and which are right here. You'll see, and we, this is a, there's a two right here, that means there's two, it's because there's two of them, and um. We're also going to take a negative out, right? I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've done everything right here. I've gone through it all in detail. Um, but yeah, so if we, the only thing that you probably might not have come by if you haven't taken quantum mechanics yet is once you get to this point here, uh, what am I doing here, right? So, so this is just this, then I'm uh, literally adding nothing, right? This is this right here is adding nothing. Uh, why do we do that? Well, you can do that, right? You, one plus zero is the same thing as one, right? So this plus zero is the same. This, we're adding zero here, right? Because this is the same thing as this. It's the same thing as multiplying by one. Multiplying by one is the same thing as adding zero. We can, the, so you can. It's legal to do this mathematically. And then, but, and so what you'll find here is that this term right here, this term right here, well, they're gonna add up, right? And this is just a commutator. This commutator right here, this is. Now, if we take these two definitions, multiply them out together, we'll see, I'm not gonna do that in this video because it's gonna take a while, that it equals one. So nothing has changed, right? Nothing, literally nothing has changed. All we've done is still defined two variables that are complex conjugates of one another. That's it. 
right? We haven't really done it. We're, we're, and we're, now we're putting them into the harmonic oscillator. And the harmonic oscillator, again, is a very important model that we use in quantum mechanics. So what do we get? We get this, right? If we distribute the one half over, we get this. Now this is interesting, right? Because this tells us that we have the, this is very mathematical, beautiful to look at too, if that's something you're into. <laughs> this is um, two variables, that's it, plus one half times this factor right here. This is sort of where the, the idea of quantum mechanics comes from also because we, we have these multiples of h bar omega and nothing, you can't have half h bar omega for example, there's no half of here, right? You can't have a quarter, right? We have these integer multiples of h bar omega which is quanta, right? When you have integer multiples of anything you have quantized that thing, right? This is what, why it's called quantum mechanics, right? And so this is, that's, again, this is a rewritten form of the Schrodinger equation using the potential for the hydrogen, or for the harmonic oscillator. That, this is, that's it. We, the, the, again, the only thing we've done is to find these things, and we just plug them in. That, that was it. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, a key thing to note, right? Um, that this is the harmonic oscillator model, just rewritten in a different way. Now, this may seem a little bit weird, right? So the A dagger and the A are the quanta dealers. Now, this is a phrase I like to use. I've, I've never heard it be used by anywhere else, but what, the fundamentally, what we're, what we're gonna find out as we progress later on in the book is that one of the things that's really important in understanding quantum fields is understanding how the creation and annihilation operators work on these fields. And so in, so in that sense, they are the things that deal with the physical particles themselves. They are the things that are creating and annihilating these particles into different states, into different energy states. And so that is why they are very important. It's one thing to say, well, we have a field and it's defined by some like spinner objects everywhere or it's defined by tensor-like objects everywhere or scalars or vectors or something like that. It, those things describe, say describe the nature of the particle. We need to be able to understand the dynamics of the particle too. And the dynamics of the particle being created and annihilated in different states requires that we have these dealers or these things that deal with the particles themselves, right? So these things are sort of what give them, make them interesting, right? Make the particles interesting. That's why I call them quanta dealers. Particle dealer is quanta. Quanta and a particle are kind of the same thing. That's just how I like thinking about them. Um, and as we'll see in later videos. So in later videos, we'll see exactly how this um, sort of ling lingo of mine gets weaved into this book. But anyways, uh, with all this being pre-written, uh, I expect these to be much more faster than 30 minutes now. So hopefully that little 15 minute marker on the bottom corner of the video uh, will be a, a, a nice surprise for, for some of you because I'm going to plan on having most everything pre-written on the screen here. So again, if you like this kind of content, uh, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.